In our previous video, we walked through inserting records into an existing table using Spring JPA, and I promised to clean up a bit of hard coding that I was doing here. We're actually really close to what we need. First, notice that our method is receiving a specimen DTO. So this object is coming from where? Well, let's take a look at our form start HTML. And if I scroll up a little bit, you'll notice that it has a th object indicator of specimen DTO. So Spring Boot and Timeleaf know to take the data from the form that the user is going to see, this form right here, bundle it up into the specimen DTO object by using a couple of indicators that we put over here called th field. And this basically says, on that specimen DTO object, take what the user entered into the latitude field and push it into the latitude field longitude, description, and plant ID, so on and so forth. Just a couple things that we need to do. We're really not that far away. Uh, one is we need to account for a new column that we've added temporarily to our specimen DTO, which is plant name. So we can edit the start HTML file and add that. The other thing we need to do is actually really simple. We just need to remove all of this hard coding because the specimen DTO that we're receiving is already populated with the user's data. So just remo remove the hard coding and we are where we need to be. So let me go ahead and delete that. I'm also going to uh, change this breakpoint, move it down to line 38 on the save method. We'll go ahead and hit save. And now I'm going to go to our HTML page called start. And I'm simply going to duplicate one of these existing rows. And we know that the plant name is kind of a local cache. In addition, it's also kind of temporary because we're eventually going to put together a true one-to-many relationship. But we have a little pre-work we're going to need to do first. Let me just duplicate this, this here. So we have uh, plant and, and we're going to get our input. Looks like I missed the input there. So let me grab that. Okay, input in a closed div. And I'm going to change this label to be plant name, just like so. And then for the input, we'll go to the end. And instead of description, we're going to call this plant name. Now, why plant name? Why does it look like that? If we look at our specimen DTO, let's remember that the attribute is also spelled plant name with a capital N. So we want to keep these two things consistent. And actually, as I'm looking at this, I realize that I've put this just slightly in the wrong place uh, because I've sandwiched it between the existing plant ID. So let me just clean that up just a little bit. There we go. So now essentially, this is the plant ID, which is numerical. Eventually, we'll fill that in using some autocomplete magic. And then this is the plant name. That's where the user will eventually start typing some autocomplete magic. So we have, our, we have what we need for our form. Let's restart and confirm that this acts as we want it to behave. Now our application is started, so I'm going to go over and refresh the start endpoint here. Okay, you see there's nothing in here yet, but we do have the plant name, the new plant name field that I promised we would add. Let's add a latitude of, let's just make something simple, 50.01 and a longitude of 25.09, something like that. Description, we'll say uh, spring flowers with an exclamation. Plant ID, we'll just make something up like 102. Plant name, we'll say Liriodendron. Tulipiferia, a tulip, poplar. So if all works well, once I hit save, we'll be able to see this in our database. Let's just take a look at what the database currently looks like so we know the current state. And this will go into the plants schema into the specimens table. You see, we currently have eight rows in the specimens table. Let's go ahead and choose save here and see if our tulip poplar becomes the ninth row. So I choose Submit, and our debugger hits, which of course is great news. Uh, we're going to simply step over this. We know the first entry through is going to take just a few moments extra because we have to set up a bit of Hibernate magic. And great, that's that was uh, good. 
whoops, let's see if we can, there we go. It skipped over the catch block and it went back to, to the return statement, which is good news. Because it skipped the catch block, this indicates that it, it indeed did save correctly. So we'll go ahead and choose resume. Let's see what the look and feel is on our browser. It simply returned to the page where we started. We might change that to have it go to a confirmation page or something of that nature. But more importantly, let's go back to our database and hit refresh. And we see Liriodendron Tulip Poplar. Sure enough, that's number nine. Just to make absolutely certain and to speed things up a little bit, I'll remove this breakpoint here. I will navigate back to our page and we'll enter some new data here. We might say uh, 84, well, let's see, latitude, we'll say 39.82. Longitude, we'll say minus 84.527. Uh, for this one, we'll say um, cherries. And we'll call this one Prunus subhertilla cherry, uh, weeping cherry. Now, without the breakpoint on, it should be fairly fast. So I hit submit and I run back to the database here. Oh, just one moment. And we should have number 10 now, Prunus subvertilla. And sure enough, we do. Prunus subvertilla we weeping cherry. So you see, now we have the form tied all the way to our database, which is quite an accomplishment. The next thing we want to take a look at in our next video is how to retrieve items from the database. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.